You are Murad Lamhiri, and you have been involved with Mac for a long time. No, yes. And today is the Eid. How are you feeling? Allah, very good. Alhamdulillah, we have a nice event here. Uh, you know, this serves the inner city uh, Muslim population. Uh, we, uh, you know, Alhamdulillah, there will be prayer here, and there will be a festival in Mississauga. Right. And there will be a free shuttle buses to go there to take them. Yeah. And uh, we hope everybody enjoys Eid. All right. Thank you very much and Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak, is like Allah.
here. Uh, first of all, apologies again. We could not uh, book the normal larger CME venue just because it wasn't available this week. And so well, here we are with the Liberty Grand. Under that, it is a beautiful building and it's a wonderful turnout. Uh, but we do still need your support financially. Uh, it's a huge expense. This is a non for profit organization, non for profit event. Uh, we rely completely on your, your donations. So please donate to the boxes that are coming through the aisles as well as the boxes that are um, at the entrance before you leave. We much appreciate that. Does that work out better? Um, after the prayer today, um, children, little boys and girls, this is for you. When you leave today, make sure you politely ask mommy and daddy to take you to the Eid Festival at the Olive Grove School in Mississauga because there are many, many exciting rides just for you. Um, yummy food, games, and treats. And that will go on all the way until 6 o'clock p.m. And if you guys don't drive or you don't know where that is, you can actually get there for free. We've arranged free transportation leading from downtown to Olive Grove School for the entire festival. After the festival in the evening at 8.45 after Bangra, we actually have a professional fireworks show for the first time. Um, so make sure you take your children there to enjoy that and make it a memorable eve for them, inshallah. It's a beautiful day, the weather is perfect, alhamdulillah, so take advantage of that. Now, the You have to get up. 
Reluctantly, you try to open your eyes. Very difficult indeed. This is the time and terrain you're not familiar with. You've never woken up this early before. You wake up, you get up, you make a noise. Your body is not agreeing with you. You're still leaving the comfort of your own warm bed, that blanket and the pillow. You move the foot and you slip it in your slippers. And you try to open up your eyes, it's still dark outside. What's wrong with this picture? You get up reluctantly and you start banging against the corridors, doors, trying to get to the bathroom so you can make wudu. Finally, you got there. And you take it for granted, the things you take it for granted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so much provisions and sustenance in this place by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A reminder not to forget your brothers and sisters the less portion that we are. For the first time in your life, you put your forehead to the ground at a time where no other time, and no better time. And the third night, the last third of the night where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends in the way befitting His Majesty. Every third of the night. Is there anyone that wants to run an air? I'm sure I want to answer for it. Is there a Quran, a supplication I will grant you? Is there anyone that will ask for repentance so I can grant them repentance? Forgiveness so I can grant them forgiveness. And that is in every night. And then you remember that you have to eat the late night meal, the suhoor. It's the sunnah of Rasulullah. After you eat the food, you know now that it's a food for the body, but there's a food for the spirit. And you bring the Quran that you left on the shelf for one whole year. You dust it off and you open it up. And is it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to you personally? You ate, you drank. I want to go back to sleep. No, you hear Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Bashir al Shaheen, Fudullah, Bidur, Tamiya, Waldiya. Give that black light for those who walk in darkness by the illuminating light and light on Judgment Day. Every footstep you take in the masjid, one good deed is written, one good deed is erased, and the sustenance are written at the time. You're the guest of Allah in the protection of Allah if you pray in jama'ah in the masjid. You already have the half of the night staying up as a reward for you praying Fajr in jama'ah. You pray Fajr in jama'ah by the blessing of Allah. And you want to go back. You go back and find out that your kids are still asleep. You haven't seen them yet. You want to go back to sleep, but you remember you have to go to work. You go to work, and you meet all these fit and tests and trials. Everybody around you in the office eating and drinking, high five and kissing and hugging. But you are saying that I'm, my name is Muhammad. For the first time in your life, you actually said your name is Muhammad. Not no. My name is Fatima, not Queen Latifa. You finally find out a way to do da'wah. Why are you not eating and drinking? I'm cutting down on the food cost today. I'm trying to lose weight. No, tell them that I'm fasting. Tell them I'm doing this. This is what says, yes, alunaka an kul. They ask about say, best way for da'wah. Then, after a long, hot summer day, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla this was supposed to be the longest and the most difficult Ramadan. Wallahi la ilaha ilaha illahu. It was the easiest and the fastest Ramadan that I've ever been to. It's only by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that made it easy for us. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا It's by the benevolence and the blessings of Allah. And His blessing that made us Muslim and follow spa'a and obedient to Him and fulfill the promise we made and oath that we took that you are our Lord. رَضِيْتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّهُ وَالْإِسْلَامِ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa rasulah. I accept Allah to, my, to be my Lord. Islam to be my way of life. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be my uswa, my role model. I want to follow his footsteps because I want to be in Jannah. I have a plan. I have a goal. What's your goal, Ali al After you go back, finished after a long day, you come back, you open the door, your children run to you with open arms. So you should ask yourself a question, Ali al do the children run to you or run away from you? A reminder, quick again, for other brothers and sisters that don't have a home, period. Moms have now take away their homes. They have no children running to them or they have no father or even mother come back to them. You think about it, the blessings and things that you take for granted. And then you sit down. You smell that beauty, the aroma of the biryani is coming up, or the patush or the hummus or kibba, whatever it is that you want to eat. Even water tastes like ice cream. And you remember Prophet Muhammad says, 
two pleasant occasions, two happy times for the person that is fasting. One, when you break your fast, a beautiful veil. And what do you have to do? You have to remember, brothers and sisters, a quick way, another quick journey. These are rhetorical questions. We're not looking for answers, but at least be honest with yourself and your own answer. If I tell you there's a, a young girl, poor girl in Africa, has no food and water, how will you feel? Just think about it. And then I'll tell you, maybe Effie, you're in love, you can't go to sleep. You go downstairs, you turn on your TV. You see this poor girl in Africa. Her face is white, she's supposed to be black from dust. Her hair is teased up from the wind. Her stomach is full of gas, no food and water. She bends over, she leans down to the ground, picks up something that is soft enough to eat, doesn't know what it is, dusts it off and eats it. How would you feel? You see, the first time I told you about it, so you're using one sense in your body. I verbally communicated that to you, so one sense, the hearing sense in your body was working. The second time I added the visual, so you didn't just hear about it, you also saw it. There are two senses in your body were acting. So you were more involved. You felt it some more. Maybe you even had a tremble in your lips. You felt it. But if you don't eat and drink yourself, your whole body is involved because your senses are involved and nobody will ever be able to tell you what it feels like to be hungry, what it feels to be like thirsty. You'll never take food for granted anymore. You'll never take water for granted anymore. You'll never throw extra food away. You will be thankful for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ni'am, the blessing He's given you. And now you know what it feels like and you say, how could I go to sleep when my brothers and sisters are hungry? So you share the food. The beauty of Ramadan is abundance. I hope you took the fruit of that, inshaAllah, of Ramadan. The most important of all, Akhi Ayyuti, continue with that journey. After you eat, you say, Ala rizqin, tawheed. Ya Rabb, I know that sustenance comes from you, Ya Allah. I will only thank you, O Allah, because tawheed al rububiyya wa al-uluhiyya, it is the reason for that we worship Allah. The manasilam of the Lordship, you know that He is the one that gives you life, takes away life. Gives you the food, the health, the water, the drink, everything. How could you be worshipping or thanking anybody else except Allah? Manafism, Tawheed, Doshir. Then after this, after you eat, you feel like going to sleep again. SubhanAllah. But you remember there's Taraweeh. And you hear the hadith again. Man qama Ramadan, not just saw Ramadan. Imana wa hizab al ufira wa taqadda bin nabi. Those who fast Ramadan only, no, those who stay up to pray in Taraweeh and Ramadan, yet late. Not niyam al-layh, like Dr. Ibad, the Lord Muhammad Allah says. Stay up and pray for the sake of Allah. Allah will forgive your previous sins. So again, you go to the masjid, you pray, Isha and Jama'ah. That's the second half of night will fulfill for you that as if you pray the whole night. Because you pray Fajr and Jama'ah and Isha and Jama'ah. After this, you pray Taraweeh. Your feet are hurting, your back is killing you. And then you remember Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he used to actually lift one foot at a time. Because he stay at night and pray. And you hear Khadija radiallahu anha wa anhu 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 wa Should he not come back and go to sleep? What did he say? Mada zaman al-nawm ya Khadija. Mada zaman al-nawm ya Khadija. The time of sleep is gone, O Khadija. Gone. Tatajafa junubuhum an al-madaja. There is animosity between you and your bed. There is dry relationship. There is no compassion, no love loss. They're not your best friend. SubhanAllah. The beauty about it, it teaches you, and that's why we call it the school of Ramadan, of who you truly are, what you're made of. And then you raise your hands up in the which Munaja, Raja, seeking Allah's pleasure, hoping that He would look at you once. Because if Allah looks at you once, He will never punish you. And then, after you walk back home, or you go home, your kids are asleep again. You miss them, and you wonder what it's all about. The fruit of Ramadan, Akhi al Bukhti, is mentioned in the Quran. You hear the verse all the time. But have you wondered why? Ya ayuhu al-ladhina alamu kutiba alayhi musiyah kama kutiba alayhi ladhina alamukum la'allakum tatakum illa taqwa. Taqsa was brought upon you as nation before you said you learned taqwa. What is this taqwa? What is this fruit? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala link it to siyah? 
Because if you don't eat and drink in front of people and you go home, close all the doors, and the only door you open is the door of the fridge, you didn't get the top of that. You always have to say, Allah You always have to say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can hear me. He supervises, he overwatches over me. So don't let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feel that. Let be the one, the least of your worries, those who see me. Why is taqwa so important? I want to take you for a good journey in the future. After a long, healthy, righteous life, that's the Yahudi. When you die, imagine that day, on judgment day, 50,000 years, the sun leaves its orbit comes close to your head. People will be drenched in sweat. Everybody will say, let see, let see. Myself, myself. And then you hear the verse, وَإِنْ مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا كَانَ عَلَى رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَقْضِيًّا None of you except will pass over it. It, meaning the hellfire. You pass over that salat. What kind of salat will you pass on? Is it as sharp as a sword? Narrow as a hair? Dark as the darkest night? Or is it wide as a valley? Or lightning, or will you fall according to your actions and deeds as the ability? Why is the taqwa then? Its answer is right after the verse. Thumma nunajil ladina taqaw wa nabulu dhalimina fiha jizia wa liyabudha. On that day where everyone will want to pass that bridge beneath it is the hellfire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the characteristics that will save you on judgment day. And we will save on that day those who practice taqwa. And then we will let those who oppress themselves fall in that hellfire. Imagine yourself wondering, what is this taqwa? And when you hear, Ya Aba Dhar, Uhkum istafina fa inna al-bahr amir. Ishtur al-shulah fa inna al-riha shaleed. وَأَكْفِرِ الزَّادِ فَإِنَّ الصَّفَرَ طَوِيلِ وَأَخْلِصُ النِّيَّةِ فَإِنَّ النَّاقِلَ بَصِيرِ Oh, Abba, perfect your shed. The ocean is deep. Tighten your sail. The winds are strong. Increase your zad, your sustenance on your journey, because the journey is long. Purify your intention. Allah subhanahu wa jalla al-Ula overwatches. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this amount of taqeen. Ameen. Just as Allah, I'll give you one more advice. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, so you graduated from the school of Ramadan. In the Qayyim Ahmadullah he says, between your actions and deeds and your heart there is a distance. If your actions and deeds did not get to your heart and change your actions and deeds and your behaviors, you haven't got the fruit of taqwa. So which heart were you? What kind of Ramadan did you have? Were you the one that says, Six months ahead of Ramadan, oh Allah, take me lifting with Ramadan like this, how about I get the Ayn Jahi? And are you the one going to be after Ramadan going, Ya Allah, accept Ramadan for me, and let me lift another Ramadan? Or were you saying, Furaqa Qaid, Ya Ramadan? Let's get rid of this Ramadan, man. I want to have Eid, I can't take this anymore. So you see, the scholars will tell you, if you were waiting for Ramadan to finish, so you can go back to your old ways, watching these bad things, hearing bad things, saying bad things, doing bad things. That path is locked. No exit. One way. <laughs> you have to take on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. This act, this oath that you've taken. And what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is told. Lastly, before the last advice I'll give you, according to Hadith Sahih Muslim, Ansari, Yadam Allah, Yadam Ansari, one of the righteous said, he's seen some people celebrating, but in a bad way, not befitting for a true Muslim, after Ramadan. He says, Wallahi, if you took advantage of Ramadan and you did all these righteous deeds, لَيْسَ عَادَ لَيْسَ عَادَ بِعَمَلِ الشَّاكِرِينَ this is not an action and deeds of those who are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala, a true believer. And if you drop the ball on Ramadan, he says, this is لَيْسَ هَذَا بِعَمَلِ الْخَائِبِينَ And if you did not take advantage of Ramadan, you drop the ball on it and you disobey Allah in it. This is 
not the action of the deeds of those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having said that, Akhiya Nuti, if you did what you're supposed to do in Ramadan, took advantage and understood the meaning behind Ramadan, Mubarak, congratulations for those who lowered their gaze, congratulations for those who walked to the Masajid, congratulations for youth in the Quran, congratulations for increasing your Iman, congratulations for using the two gates to before you utter, no backbiting, congratulations of turning the left ear on the healers, congratulations of forgiving one another, congratulations of coming close to Allah. For those who didn't, we have condolences. But if that's the case, never despair of Allah's mercy. Indeed, he's the one that says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَرْنَضُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرِ الظُّلُوبَ جَمِيعًا قُلْ تَقْرِنِيَ قُلْ يَا مُحَمَّدْ Say unto them, Ya Muhammad, alayhi salatu salam. To my slaves, those who are extravagant, exceed the boundaries of the acts of disobedience. Never despair of Allah's mercy. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. The verse that says that in Allah that I should be you after the Madhu Nadi This is enough on Judgment Day. If you die, it's in shirk. There's no abrogation. There's no contradiction. Now, if you hear that, is it beneficial or enough for you to hear? Illa man taba wa amana wa amina amalan saliha fa ulaika yubaddil Allah sayyati hasanat Allah akbar ma arhamak Except those who repent, believe and do good deeds Not only Allah will wipe your sins, He will turn them into good deeds So what are you waiting for? Tawbah will be another topic inshaAllah Last advice I'll give you is that six inshaAllah the hikmah, the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala done this in the sunnah of us. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man sabar Ramadan wa al-ba'ah wa bisiddim min shawal fa ka'ina wa sallam da'ah. The hadith sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala al-ba'ah wa sallam ala al-ba'ah. He said that if you fast the month of Ramadan and follow by six days of shawal as if you fast for the whole year. Hikmah, what's the wisdom behind it? To tell you that now, you continue. Laysa man wadda'a Ramadan wadda'a ibadah. Not those who say so long Ramadan, so long for the ibadah. Rabbu Ramadan, Rabbu Ghayr Ramadan. The Lord that told you what to do, what not to do in Ramadan, is the same Lord that is after Ramadan. Don't be Ramadan. Continue with the ibadah. So after this, you, you pass six months in the month of Shawwal, and that tells you what the mercy of Allah, the generosity of Allah. Because one month you fast it, and the hasana bi ashr and thaliha. Multiplied by ten as if you fasted ten months. Six days of Shawwal, multiplied by ten as if you fasted sixty days. That's the other two months. As if you fasted for the whole year. Allah, Allah. Don't let this golden opportunity slip through your fingers. My brothers and sisters, the last thing I, I, I feel I'll leave you with a quotation from Dr. Gloves. He says, Oh Allah, forgive our past. Oh Allah, accept our fast. Oh Allah, don't make it our past. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this beautiful gathering to accept from us, I mean, all the righteous deeds and keep us away from the hellfire. And grant his jannah and make us from the fa'azim according to the Quran, those who are successful ones. I mean, with this we do the dua, inshallah, may be amongst this one child that is righteous that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept our dua from his name, inshallah. Ya Rabbi, Allah, alhamdulillah, wa barakatuh, 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 wa اللهم انصر الاسلام وعز المسلمين وعن بفضلك كلمه الحق والدين واذل الشرك والمشركين اعداء اعداء الدين اوقع الكافرين في الكافرين واوقع الظالمين في الظالمين واخرجنا من بين المسلمين اللهم احفظنا من الاسلام قائمين واحفظنا من الاسلام قاعدين واحفظنا من الاسلام راقدين ولا تشرك بنا الاعداء والحاسدين اللهم احفظنا من بين ايدينا ومن خلفنا وعن المالنا وعن شمائلنا ومن فوقنا ونعوذ بعض مرتنا وتالا من تحتنا just in case we do things for rewards. When you hear Prophet Muhammad says that the Hatab, the two pleasant occasions, are only for the one. But in the hereafter, what is your reward? There's a gate called the Rayyan who open up for those only who fast it. After you drink from it, you will never get thirsty again. After the, the fasting ones enter through that gate of Rayyan, nobody will be able to come in back again. You will eat because you're hungry? No, because there's no pain in Jannah. You will drink because you're thirsty? No, that's a form of pain, there's no pain in Jannah. You will eat and drink because the reward and the beautiful taste. After you just will relieve yourself, no, it will evaporate like an aroma. Where will you live? A, a castle made of silver and gold. What will you step on? Precious stones. Who will serve you? People
people that will look like pearls. Who is your neighbor? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What will you look like? Like Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, the best of creation, the most beautiful of creation out of the beauty. Age 33 years old, like Prophet Isa alayhi salam. Never get old again, never get age again. No sores, no death, no taxes, no homework, no job, nothing except eternal pleasure. Who will you get an invitation from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give You're sick of your castle, you go into your tent. What is a tent? An empty pearl, 60 lim. You have a tree made of palm trees. On that trunks are made of silver and gold. Beneath the shade you will go for 2,000, for 1,000 years. Your least of us will go into his domain in 2,000 years. That's the least of us. Imagine if the coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give that. Abdi stabtu ilayka wa zunni, I miss you my slave, come and visit me. You will eat and drink something that is special that even in Jannah you will get. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give that. Khululun bila maut. No death after this, eternal bliss. Ask of me, Ya Rabb. You kept us away from the hellfire. You attained this heaven. What else can we ask for? Radiyatu ankum. I am pleased with you. I will never be angry with you again. Ziyada. Now at husna. What do you need more? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal his sound accordingly. In a way befitting his majesty. There's nothing better than this, Ya Rabb. You will hear beautiful voices of the, the maidens, the Hulayn, the prophets and messengers, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Yoda. So come, take that on. Walk in the path of the prophets and messengers, and walk in the path of the Sahaba, so you can meet them there, inshaAllah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who speak speech and follow the best of it. And if you gather the period this dunya, to gather us in Jannah, with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Bible Allah, congratulations, great Mubarak, inshaAllah. I won't forget you, my dua, so don't forget me, your dua. Jazakumullah khair, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Assalamu alaikum, this is Hemi Syed here at the Liberty Brand on the CNE Grounds Exhibition Place. It is Sunday, August um, 19, I guess, whatever it is. It is the Eid Day. This is the GTA Eid Al Fitr organized by the Muslim Association of Canada. Um, this is for me day 31 of 30 Mustards, 30 Mustards in 30 days in the greater Toronto area. It's the big Eid festival uh, day, celebration, Thanksgiving. Um, there is other events around the city. Inshallah, I will get to them. I want to wish every one of you who've been following me uh, from the beginning, along the way, now and then, dropping in and out on the website, on Twitter, uh, Eid Mubarak, uh, the best of wishes. And Inshallah, if I don't see you in real life, I will continue to see you online. Uh, Himi Syed on the Eid day after 30 days of Ramadan around the greater Toronto area. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.